Hello world, hello Australia, it's Jamie here the Crypto Koala. Today guys, I've got a very special guest. He's head of oracles, head of smart contracts, and a developer for MakerDAO. His name is Mariano Conti. Great to have you on here today, Marion, mate. Thank you for inviting me. So man, we'll get straight into it. Hey. So, so man, tell us a bit about yourself and what inspired you to develop on MakerDAO and be with the MakerDAO team? Um, well, uh, like you said, my name is uh, Mariano Conti. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. And I've been using crypto for a while, uh, ever since like late 2014, early 2015, um, getting paid uh, using Bitcoin, um, working for companies outside Argentina. So I've been in crypto for a while. And um, when Ethereum mainnet started, I was very much into it, but mostly as a as an Ether holder, and then tried to find like the best project building on Ethereum, and that was Maker. And I started working there like mid 2016, late 2016, and uh, I just uh, thought that it was like the best project uh, using the Ethereum blockchain and and where I wanted to work. And that's where I've been for like two and a half years now. Oh, awesome. So they must be looking after you there then. Yeah, it's um, so uh, one of the cool things about um, crypto, for example, living in a, in a place like Argentina that it's so uh, the economy is so underserved is that, uh, you know, a lot of people got into it early and we have like, an awesome amount of talent here and the stuff that we're doing it also resonates right like creating a stable coin which is something that argentinians do not have uh, we do not have anything resembling a, a stable coin for our local currency rate oh interesting mate so you know talking we're going to the um, the actual maker maker down the die stable coin so what about that is the relationship between them two like how does that work um so MakerDAO, let's say um is the the project the foundation that bootstrapped the system and uh is responsible for creating the the smart contracts when you say maker maker is a, a set of smart contracts running on ethereum but it's also uh, the maker community the foundation the keepers the oracles uh, that keep running the system the arbitragers that take uh, opportunities to to buy sell collateral so it's a um it's like a very varied ecosystem and uh, that's more or less what we call maker as a whole yeah with the actual die token like mm. how how's like the maker token a die token how what makes it stay corn relationship Okay, so uh, the ultimate byproduct of Maker is the the Dai stablecoin, which is a, a cryptocurrency that is pegged uh, one to one to the U.S. dollar. And the way to create uh, this Dai token is to um, have an, a valuable asset, which in this case is uh, Ether, and locking it up in a smart contract and borrowing against uh, this Ether. So. Whenever somebody does that, uh, they create DAI. So the whole of the DAI supply that is in existence, it exists because somebody borrowed uh, this DAI against Ether. And um, that is like one part uh, of, this, of the system, the, the DAI stablecoin. The other part is the MKR token, which is uh, the governance, the governance token that um, people who hold it, they vote on different parameters of the system. So I guess, you know, with Bitcoin, it's so volatile and hopefully as volume increases and the market cap gets bigger, like a lot bigger, it gets more stable, but I guess that's a long time away. So what mechanisms are in place at the moment to give the DAI stable coin maximum stability? Like um, maximum stability is possible. Yeah, so there's, 
different uh, there's different levers that the the MKR holders can can activate to ensure stability. Right. Um, the first and the one that we've been using the most is uh, interest rates. So whenever somebody locks up Ether and borrows DAI against it, they have to pay an interest rate, which we call the, the stability fee. So uh, when the system started, the stability fee was very low. It was half, half a percent uh, per year of your debt. And, and that has steadily been uh, growing. Right now it's 16.5%. Uh, but um, the stability fee is the main one that we have to ensure uh, that the price stays around $1. So if there's a lot of dye in the market and, um, uh, and we see that the price is trading uh, lower than, than $1, what we do is uh, the maker community votes to increase the, uh, the stability fee. So we make it more expensive. Um, to borrow uh, to create DAI. So this, um, this creates an effect that the people who have open positions, they need to uh, go out into the market and buy DAI uh, to repay their loans because it's getting more expensive for them to have their loans, right? So uh, they go out and they buy DAI in the, uh, in the open market and that uh, raises the price of DAI uh, until we uh, hover again around one dollar, and if DAI is trading above one dollar, then we do the opposite. We make it cheaper for people to create their loans, um, so uh, more people will be incentivized to uh, create DAI, and they uh, flood the market with it. And that is that is the main um, the the main lever that we have to uh, to keep DAI around one dollar. Yeah, okay, Marin. Well, um, I guess DAI, just with the difference in stable coins, and I mean, you've got DAI as what I see as a decentralized stable coin, Tether, um, True USD, uh, being a centralized. And recently you had like JB Morgan with mm -hmm. that like internal closed centralized stable coin. And recently you're going to have even Facebook that's going to bring up that global coin and that's going to be an internal uh, stable coin. So I guess stable coins are becoming slowly, but surely becoming more of a thing now and the importance of them is getting recognized. So what do you think are the pros and cons between the decentralized stable coins with the, mm -hmm. with, with the die and you've got, you know, your centralized stable, stable coins. Um, so, I, I saw a video the, the other day of uh, Andreas Antonopoulos getting asked a similar question and he said that um, he sees like JP Morgan coin and Facebook coin more like competing with PayPal and Venmo than with um, uh Because here's the thing, um, the, the other coins that you mentioned, they're mostly like IOU tokens, so it's... Um, decentralized uh, companies or projects, they say, hey, for, for every token that I issue, I have the equivalent in USD, for example, in a bank account or in bonds or in uh, some um, problem is that most of this, first, they're hard to audit, uh, contrary to DAI, for example, that all you need to do is look at a smart contract and see how much uh, value is locked up, right? In the case of Ether, uh, we have, I think, something like $400 million worth, worth of Ether locked up, and you can always see that, right? So it's, uh, it's more transparent. And um, I actually, I think I see more companies getting into this space as more of a validation of what we're doing rather than competition, because some of this, um, I don't know if you can even consider a cryptocurrency per se, even if it ends up being run uh, on a blockchain, because um, the some of these they don't fulfill everything that a crypto should be, right? So um, uh, transparent, unstoppable. Uh, most of this, from what I've seen, are going to have whitelists and KYC requirements, which is something that Dai uh, doesn't have, and that's. Actually, it's uh, strength. 
I guess something you touched on, um, and it really hit a point there, is that with Teva, and Teva was known as not being transparent, and with smart contracts, the beauty of getting built on Ethereum is that with smart contracts, it's so transparent, you couldn't just, so that sort of, when it comes to regulation, and when it comes to other projects, choosing the die stable coin, that transparency is so important, especially even institutions down the track as well. Like to be able to see that for auditing purposes, I guess is is, is a really good pro there. Um, so just say, for example, um, we just talk about the CDP at the moment, the, the collateralized mm -hmm. deposition um, program. So say someone puts down ETH as a collateral, mm -hmm. and then um, they take out DAI. What are some of the use cases for the actual die stable coin? You know, we, we've we've sort of touched in a little bit, but you know, just you know, some I know there's there's many out there, but just just from your perspective, and um, the... yeah, um, so there's there's two types of users, uh, right? For for the die stable coin, there's uh, I would say the die holders, which is just somebody who wants to hold die. Um, for example, to uh, hedge against uh, volatility. So maybe you have Ether, you think that, the, or another token, you think that the price is going to go down, you trade that for DAI, uh, and then you're, uh, you're pretty much uh, safe from whatever price fluctuations, right? Yeah. Um, or somebody who wants to get paid their salary in DAI, so... That's that's one type of user. The other type of user is uh, the DAI creator, right? The, the people who actually use CDPs to uh, to create DAI. And um, for this kind of users, the, the most basic one is leverage, right? Um, you lock up Ether, you borrow DAI, you use that DAI to buy more Ether, and you do this a couple of cycles. The most you can get into is like, uh, I think it's 3x leverage. Um, but then it's pretty risky, right? If the price of Ether drops sure. even a cent, then, then you can get liquidated. But leverage is the most obvious one. Um, another one, uh, another use and one that I've done personally is, uh, let's say, uh, so you have Ether and you need to buy something. Uh, in my case, it was a car. I had a good opportunity to buy a car. I wasn't liquid enough and I didn't want to sell my Ether because if we're in this, most of us uh, think that the price of Ether is going to go up, right? Um, so I needed um, like $10,000 and I didn't want to sell my Ether, so I locked up Ether in a CDP, I borrowed DAI against it, and then I used that DAI to pay for the car and over the course of a few months, I repaid uh, my DAI loan uh, with my paycheck over, uh, I think it was three months, and then three or four months, and then that's it. You, you get your ether back. That's uh, that's also another use case. We've seen people um, they sent us stories that they paid for mortgages this way, uh, honeymoons for buying like a food truck somewhere. Yeah. So, um, yeah. How about on the, um, the point of sales side, how do you think of merchant adoption wise? Do you think, you know, how, how do you think that's going? Like, you know, just directly um, use and die? We're not quite there yet. Um, and even even Bitcoin as a, yeah. as a medium of exchange um, is not there yet, right? And, and that's like the biggest market with the with the highest liquidity. So um, we've, we're slowly, for example, Maker is doing some deals in Colombia to add, because um, because they do have some point of sale systems there, mostly using uh, Bitcoin. And we want to get DAI in there as uh, something where people can use it to buy and sell uh, daily goods, right? Um, an interesting experiment I don't know if you've seen is uh, XDAI, which uh, XDAI is a side chain uh, of Ethereum where the native currency is DAI. So uh, you have a bridge between the two chains, between Ethereum and, and the XDAI chain. But in the XDAI chain, um, 
like I said, the, the native currencies die. So gas prices are paid in DAI and everything, everything happens uh, with DAI. So you know that um, you're using a stable coin uh, for all your, your gas costs. And this XDAI chain has been used uh, a lot for, for example, the burner wallet by Austin Griffith, um, which you see in more and more events and hackathons. Uh, that's been used a lot for like the local economy for uh, buying food every day at a hackathon. And it's as simple as opening up um, a website and scanning a QR code. And so we, we see that using side chains and next time in particular is good because we, uh, you have like five second block uh, time confirmations, which are extremely fast. Um, but we're still not there yet on mainnet, let's say. So I guess it's bringing stability, like having that maker X brings stability to gas prices. Uh, yeah, that, um, yeah, that's pretty awesome. That is really good because uh, I was looking at some smart contracts that I deployed like two years ago. Uh, and w when you saw what you were spending at maybe all time high ETH prices, it was crazy, right? And um, I'm not saying that we're going to have that, uh, anytime soon in Ethereum, because there's a reason why the, the the base token is ETH and there's economic reasons uh, to have uh, gas prices be uh, valued in ETH. But for a side chain, it is something uh, quite interesting. So just, you know, you're being built on Ethereum, like MakerDAO is, is built on mm -hmm. Ethereum. Like what makes Ethereum awesome to build on? Um, yeah. Well, um, I, I joined the project in 2016, right? But the project uh, maker probably started around 2014, even before Ethereum mainnet. And it was a project that was going to be run on um, BitShares. Oh, yeah. So it started uh, with people from the BitShares community and the original MKR token uh, was actually created on BitShares. So oh, interesting. when when the people that worked on it saw uh, Ethereum, they, uh, they said, okay, this, is, uh, this will grant us a, a better platform to build what we wanna build, right? And so, so far, we haven't seen anything better for, uh, for developing makers. So for one, we have Ether as collateral, right? And Ether is the second um, biggest uh, cryptocurrency uh, by market cap, whatever. So it is a good, it, it is a really great um, token to use uh, as a as a collateral, right? Also, you have so many other tokens in there already. Like ninety five percent of all tokens, or around that number, are uh, native to the Ethereum blockchain, right? So you have access to a whole bunch of different collaterals. So I think that gives it an advantage. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, just the future of Ethereum, I mean, just how, how the platform would integrate and help you guys out. So in the future of Ethereum 2.0 and moving over to proof of stake, do you think that'd be beneficial to you guys with say like CDP generation for lower gas prices? Um, well, there's, there's some things that I think will be great for the maker system. So the, the move to eWASM, and I haven't done a lot of research on this, but I know that there's going to be certain opcodes that are not available right now in the EVM in Ethereum 1.x that will make a lot of the calculations that we need to do for uh, CDPs uh, extremely cheap. So we are gonna have, uh, if all of those plans do come true, uh, we are gonna, gonna have like a better, cheaper system running. As, as for the other things that Ethereum 2.0 are gonna have like, um, like sharding, for example, I, I guess we we need to see how that is going to work because one of my fears is that um, let's say that Maker is running in one shard, that 
if we take the whole of uh, decentralized finance projects like DeFi, Maker is like 85% of that. So if you have Maker be on under just one Ethereum 2.0 shard, then that would possibly be the biggest shard around. So we would uh, need to also take that into account and see if we um, if we take advantage of this by actually dividing the whole of Maker into several different shards, or or what we end up doing there. So that hopefully that's that's still that's a, a problem for the future. So. Okay, awesome, man. I'll just um, talk about the, the actual make token for a little bit, yeah. if, if you wouldn't mind. Like, um, so what's the, you kind of briefly talked about what the maker token is used for, but just say, for instance, with the actual voting. So, um, if the interest rate, like, how come it fluctuates? Like, is there is there a chance for the interest rate to be lower in the future if the price goes up? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the NPR token is the, the governance token uh, of the whole system. And uh, this is what we call the high risk, high reward token, because the NPR token is volatile. Like the whole idea is uh, to have two tokens in the system is that you have the stable one and you have the volatile one. And NPR is the token that you, uh, that you purchase and you hold when you want to have an active voice in the system. And, and, and that's what we tell people, that MKR is not just a token that you buy uh, expecting it to moon and just forget about it. The, this is a token that if you have it, we encourage you to actively participate as a community member. So if you own MKR, you are expected to participate in votes. We have almost a weekly voting uh, to be a part of the community, to uh, come up with ideas. And one of the things that we vote on almost weekly is the stability fee, the, the interest rates um, for, this, uh, for these loans, right? And um, when we started uh, voting on this, we didn't see a lot of uh, participation, but as... Uh, uh, as time went by, we've been seeing a lot more and, and people becoming really active in the community and um, coming up with different websites uh, with data for uh, for DAI stability and why they think that the interest rate should be higher or should be lower. And that is what, what the MKR token gives you. It's like voting uh, rights to the system. and. Right now, it's mostly voting on this uh, stability fees. It's like if you believe that right now sixteen point five is a is a good number that keeps uh, die stable around the dollar, uh, then you vote to keep that. Otherwise, you can vote to lower it, to raise it, um, and also in multi collateral die MKR is also the token. Uh, it's an inflationary token, right, uh, or deflationary as well. So when people pay the interest rates, the stability fees, they pay it in MKR, and this MKR gets burned. So if the system is functioning properly, MKR holders are, are incentivized to actually to vote in the best interest of the system, because if it's working properly, uh, people will, will pay their, their stability fees with MKR, and this MKR will be burned, and uh, everybody's NPR will appreciate. But if the system is managed incorrectly, and let's say that uh, a lot of CDPs have to be liquidated because of a flash crash or because somebody didn't vote in the correct parameters, then NKR is the token of last resort to bail out underwater CDPs, right? Um, so let's say you took out 100 DAI in debt um, with a collateral that flash crashed and we could only recover 90 die of your 100 die debt. So that 10 die difference, the system needs to, um, needs to mint new maker and sell it uh, in the open market to make up for that uh, uh, underwater CDP, that 10 die debt. And so in that case, that has never happened yet. 
uh, but it is something that that the system uh, is intended to do. So, so it's got that you, that mechanism in place. It's like you know the the last line of defence, but it you know it's got other ones, but that that's there just in case, you know. Yeah, that's that's really the last one. Uh, there are mechanisms in between, but but the last one is really inflating maker. So okay. that's something that that people need to know that you're responsible when you own the MPR token. You're responsible for the system, and so people are incentivized to um, to act honestly and vote honestly, and maybe um, maybe they can even vote in new collaterals in MCD that um, seem risky, but if they vote in the correct risk parameters, then they're mitigating some of that risk, right? So you can say, okay, I, I can vote in this, uh, I don't know, XYZ token, but you set up uh, maybe a high stability fee or a low debt ceiling. And that is uh, actually probably what I'm most excited about uh, uh, in the coming months when we release MCD. Oh, great. I mean, like, so just for example, could they vote in say another form of collateral in the future? So say like BTC, I just put it out there, just to diversify um, like the collateralization, so multiple assets. You know, is it something that you know, can be done in the future, I guess, being on a theme with smart contracts and having that sort of cross chain, is that possible to accommodate that in the future? So for multi-collateral value, um, yes. So cross-chain, it would depend on uh, the quality of the of the bridges, right? But for example, right now you do have a wrapped BTC on Ethereum, uh, which is like an ERC twenty representation of uh, Bitcoin. Uh, in this case, uh, the Bitcoin is um, is stored. Uh, it's like a custodian model that there are several uh, different yeah. actors, several different projects. Uh, so if MKR token holders were to vote in, for example, wrap BTC, then, then yeah, it would mean that you would be able to borrow DAI against a representation of Bitcoin, right? Oh, great stuff. So what's the next 24 months look like for, you know, for yourself and the, and the rest of the development team? Um, so the idea is to release multi-collateral DAI this year, right? So that's that's the immediate future. It's uh, getting multi-collateral DAI out, which is like the true representation of the system as was intended. And once that is out, then um, there's plenty of things. Uh, one of the main ones is trying to get other collaterals into the system. So. Uh, security tokens maybe um, and other types of, uh, of collateral that is also very dependent on how regulation goes and um, how other standards maybe uh, turn out because as you know there's there's different standards for security tokens and like the regulatory um, environment right now it's still pretty much in limbo for certain things so not not everybody knows uh, what the future is going to look like but uh, the idea behind maker is to um, try to get as many collaterals as we can and as uh, uncorrelated as we can right because the whole idea is that um, you have different collaterals because they're not correlated, right? So in case one goes down, you can make sure that it Diversifies doesn't... Diversifies uh, the risk. Exactly, exactly. So um, are you able to say potentially what one and could be? Or are you able to say that at the moment? Um, no, we, we haven't uh, released uh, the tentative list yet. Um, I know that the the risk teams inside maker they're working uh, on this and i'm pretty sure uh, it's gonna come out um don't quote me on this but maybe in under a month okay um because uh, and of course this is uh, 
what we've been doing all along, right? Like the Maker Foundation, uh, which is in charge of bootstrapping the system, it's uh, we come out with a tentative list, we present it to the community, we assess, uh, uh, when I say community, the MKR holders, we assess uh, sentiment, and then we start voting on this, right? So actually people voting with their MKR saying yes to this, no to this, and because um, it's not as simple as just saying, hey, I want this token in multi-collateral DAI. It's like, okay, you need to present an argument as to why, and uh, you need to present a whole bunch of, like a risk model, right? You need to say uh, how, how much you can borrow against this. So that's like the debt ceiling, uh, how much the penalties are if you default on your loan, how much the interest rates are going to be. So... Um, it's a big process. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, I'll go for the finish up, um, Mariana. Just if one of your tweets that I saw the other day, which is really interesting tweet that stood out. So if you had a, a million ETH that could be freed up from the DAI e uh, credit system right now, and it would still be 194% either collateralized. Yeah, so um, the system requires, and that, is, that is pretty amazing. The system requires 150% um, 150 collateralization. So for every die that you borrow, you need to have $1.5 worth of ether in the system, right? At least. And a lot of the CDP holders, they're more conservative and they keep a lot more. And when I wrote that tweet, I think the, the system was around five to one. So for every die in circulation, there was, there was almost $5 worth uh, of ether locked up in the system. And I did the calculation and, and, and yeah, you could remove a million ether from the system and it will still be safe. It would be almost uh, $2 of ether for every die. And, and that, that talks, um, so it talks to the, to the health of the of the system, but also let's be honest, the fact that uh, ether rallied from like eighty dollars mm. to uh, to forty to fifty, right? And a lot of people just decided to keep their collateral in the system, uh, but it's still it's still like a, a nice number. But what I think is going to happen as more and more tools uh, emerge, because we've been seeing this from a lot of other uh, different projects. Uh, we're going to see tools that let you rebalance your CDP automatically. So you maybe, maybe you're loaning ETH on uh, DYDX, for example, and you're loaning DAI on uh, Compound, and you say that you want to keep your CDP at 200%, and there's going to be tools that maybe take out or put in uh, different tokens from different places uh, in order to keep it that way but uh as long as uh, as it's in a safe ratio you can they can maybe take it out and put it in in a savings account so you can start earning interest um so i would expect that number to go down as more tools emerge that let you do this kind of things automatically um but still it's nice to see that uh, most of the cdp holders are conservative in their yeah, risk taking sure. And it'd just be interesting in the future to see if people get more confident and that ratio sort of changes a bit. But uh, mm -hmm. so guys, just give a quick disclaimer and um, do your own research. I'm not telling you to get, take out a CDP and it's up to you guys. You know, I, I really like the project. It's, it's really, looks really awesome. But of course, do your own uh, due diligence. Um, Mariana, it's been awesome talking to you. I'll put the links down below if you want to check out Make It make a DAO and the, the recent upcoming um, updates or developments and also I'll put down uh, Mariano's Twitter Twitter handle as well if you want to you know go and give him a follow in or, or keep updated with what developments are going to be coming out on uh, make a DAO so Marin it's been absolute pleasure talking to you mate and you have a wonderful day hey you too thank you so much for having thanks, me thanks mate bye <laughs>